Without further ado, let's call our next storyteller, Grace. Baby perfume is a thing. And I know this because when I was younger, my grandmother used to love to put it on me. And we would very dramatically sing an old Cuban song that went, Perfume de gardenia tiene tu boca, perfume de amor, which translates to, your mouth has the scent of gardenias, the scent of love. Which I understand is a weird duet to sing with your grandmother. <laughs> but we had kind of a weird relationship. She came to the United States from Cuba when she was in her 40s, and she was always trying to find ways to connect with me and teach me about Cuban culture. I grew up in Miami, and my mom was also born in Cuba, but my dad was a white guy from Wisconsin, so she had a lot of ground to cover. <laughs> As I got older, our relationship became a little more complicated. Other than the generational gap, there was a huge culture, culture and language barrier and we just couldn't understand each other. For example, I couldn't understand why every time she came over, we had to watch Telemundo, and it had to be at volume level 100. <laughs> and then she didn't understand why I had to paint my nails black and wanted to go to the mall alone with my friends. <laughs> to be fair, my grandmother probably spent most of her life thinking she would have Cuban grandkids in Cuba who liked Cuban sandwiches. <laughs> and she ended up with me, this pale, awkward American kid who doesn't like pickles, and who wore shirts from Hot Topic that said things like, clowns are trying to kill me as I sleep. <laughs> she never explicitly said she wished I was more Cuban, but I found her criticisms to be a little pointed. For example, she would tell me that I didn't emote enough, shockingly. Uh, she said I was too shy. One time I got in trouble because I wasn't excited enough to look at her vacation pictures. And every family has those perfect cousins that they were always compared to, and mine just so happened to be 100% Cuban. I took all these criticisms in stride. I internalized them, as you do, the healthy way. <laughs> because here's the thing. When someone is 45 and leaves everything they know behind to start over in a new country with their three kids so that their kids and grandkids can have a better life, you can't really stand up to them. After high school, I did something really American, and I went all the way across the country to Chicago for school. So my grandma and I talked on the phone, and I learned that Spanglish is a language better spoken in person when you can use hand gestures. So our conversations were a little limited. Uh, we mostly talked about the weather, because my Spanish weather vocabulary is very good, and the Duolingo owl would agree with me. <laughs> but then she started doing this thing where she would ask me, how Chicago? Hace frío? Is it cold? but she started saying that like 10 times in one conversation. And at first I was like, is she just like giving me crap because she's mad that I moved, which is something she would totally do. But that actually ended up being one of the first signs of her dementia. The doctor said it would probably be about a year before she forgot everyone. And that year was really weird because sometimes I would see my grandmother who hated my genes and loved orchids. But then other times we'd have these weird situations, like I was home visiting from college and she called me over and I thought she was going to ask me to get her water, turn on the fan, get her purse, my usual granddaughter duties. But instead she was like, hey Grace, very casually, can you wipe the blood off the walls? I was like, huh? Okay, here's the thing. There was no blood on the wall. She was hallucinating. But what did I do? Well, when someone leaves everything behind to come to a new country so that their kids and grandkids can have better opportunities, you wipe the blood off the walls, all right? You can't say no. <laughs> About a year later, she did forget everyone, and she became bedridden. She had no idea what was going on, but she was overall content. And I found myself in this weird place where now I had to find a way to connect with her. And there's this beautiful thing that happens when a loved one gets sick, this nurturing, caring side of you comes out that you didn't know existed. That didn't happen for me, uh, but it's, <laughs> it definitely happened for my perfect cousin. And I always laughed because I knew that if my grandmother was a sound mind, she would waste no time in reminding me of that. But just like my grandmother had done for me, I did my best. 
and ironically, we watched a lot of Telemundo at volume level 100. Our favorite show was Caso Cerrado, Case Closed, which is like Judge Judy, but way better. <laughs> but a good thing did come out of this time because I got to learn about my grandmother through the stories of my other family members. And for the first time, I really understood her in a way that I never did growing up. I realized that all these things I had taken of, as criticisms were really just her trying her best to connect with me and teach me about the Cuban culture that was so important to her. The last time I saw her before she died, I knew it would be the last time because she had been nonverbal for a while. She wasn't responding to anyone. And I was talking to her, I was trying to get some reaction. But she was staring right through me, I was getting nothing. And excuse me for being so casual about it, but you have to understand at this point, it had been years since my grandmother knew who I was. So I started looking through her stuff, and on her dresser, I found a bottle of baby perfume. So I opened it up, and I was like, Abba, do you remember? Perfume de gardenia tiene tu boca. And without skipping a beat, my grandmother sang, Perfume de amor. Thank you. As you can see, some of our storytellers uh, read the stories. Some of our storytellers tell the stories from memory. Our storytellers, our show is as diverse on the styles of their storytelling as it is on the performance as well. And if you're sitting out there and you're like, oh, I have a story to tell. Yes, we're always looking for storytellers. I'm looking at a couple of people already. <laughs> uh, so we're always looking for storytellers to come to our show and share the stories. On the program, as you see, there's the website a couple of times there, Nestor Gomez Storyteller. You'll find the information there. Send me an email. Let me know that you want to tell a story. I will help you get your story together. I will give you, I cannot tell you how to write your story or how to tell your story, but I could ask you questions about the story that will help you develop your story. Or I could maybe point you on the, on the right direction or make, help you get your story down to six minutes. Because sometimes <laughs> we have a story and it could be like two hours and a half. I'm like. Good, but that's a whole show. We only need six minutes. So, right? So feel free to send me an email. I will help you tell your stories. Uh, descendants, allies, or immigrants. We always welcome your stories. And let's bring our next storyteller. <laughs> 